In this tutorial, I'm going to explain how to use Google Maps Style Editor. It can be a little intimidating, but if you can understand a few fundamental things, I think it'll all make sense. We'll start with the basics and then we'll create a map style together. All right, let's do this. Now, Style Editor is found in Google Cloud. Let's go to Map Styles and let's create a style, open in Style Editor, and here we are. This is Style Editor. Now let's center it in a place I'm familiar with, like Toronto. Awesome. And let's go over the basics. So we have our list of features here. Features can have elements, and elements can have stylers. Road is an example of a feature. And the road is made up of different elements, right? There is fill, which is the, the sort of the white color. The stroke, which is kind of the, the gray border text, and of course, icons. These are all elements that we can style with stylers. So let's click text fill, and let's change the text fill to, uh, let's say like a nice red, and there we go. Now I chose text fill, not just text, because if we choose text and we set it to bright red, you'll see the text now looks kind of like bubbly. And that's because text changes both the fill and stroke. We really just want to change the color of the fill. Nice. Now the default Google Maps style includes like a lot of icons. So if we want to just remove all icons, we can use the all feature to set icon visibility to off. That's a lot better, right? But let's say we wanted to bring back some icons. For example, what if we wanted our road icons back? We could go down to road, choose icon, turn them on, and now we have our road icons back. This works because there is a hierarchy to features. So our road feature overruled the all feature. And we could get even more specific. For example, highway is a child of road. And we could turn off the icons for highway. So they're off, this is what they look like on and off again. And if we close this, now we have road icons, but no highway icons. Now that we've made some edits, I want to point something out to you. These blue dots, they're important. They show us where we've made edits. So we can do things like go back and reset our styles by setting our visibility stylers back to inherit. Now inherit is a really important word here. Right now we have this Google map default style and we are inheriting all of its styles. When we create styles like setting the road visibility to off, then we are overruling the default map style. When we set visibility back to inherit, we are inheriting the default map style. Now with this in mind, let me show you the quickest possible way to turn your map black and white. Go to all, all, and just turn down the saturation. This is literally just turning down the saturation for the default Google map style. So this is why Google suggests you be cautious when using saturation because your style could end up looking different down the road. Okay, that's the basics. Now let's try creating our own map style together. So to start, let's go to all and let's turn off all icons, much cleaner. And now let's go to all text fill and let's give it a nice bright red. And you know what? Let's go to stroke and we'll make sure it's a white border or stroke. And let's increase the width. Let's give it a nice bubble look. Sweet, that looks cool. Uh, now let's go through all of these features. Administrative is just text on your map. So let's turn neighborhoods off and show you what that looks like. And back on, off. And we'll, we'll leave it on for now. Landscape. Uh, when I edit landscape, I mostly just change human made and natural. So let's move to the border of Toronto. And you can see natural is green and human made is beige. Let's make human made um, kind of like a really soft pink. I think that complements our text. Uh, let's go to natural and let's give that... Um, a similar pink, but maybe just a little darker. Let's dial that in. 
Yeah. Cool. I like that. Now let's go back to the downtown and we can see there are actually still pockets of other colors. For example, parks are green. Now these other pockets of colors are points of interest and we can give them a similar light red fill. Sweet. I like that. Um, okay. Let's keep going through features. Next up, let's give road um, a nice bright red. I think this will really make, uh, make the map pop. Nice. You know what, it, I think there's too much text going on right now. So let's go back to neighborhoods and let's just turn off the neighborhood. Okay, that's a little less convoluted. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. So transit. Uh, transit covers all kinds of things, including uh, airports and railways. But let's not touch that for this video. Let's skip it and move on to water. Let's see if we can find a nice watercolor. Maybe turquoise. Okay. Yeah, that might be just a touch too bright. Um, what if we just doll that up a little bit? And you know what? There we go. Is this a perfect map style? No, but I did it on the fly. So you, you'll have to forgive me. But I don't know. It's definitely got its own vibe. There are two other tools that I want to mention here. This is Snazzy Maps, and it has thousands of Google Maps styles that you're free to use. And this is Atlas. Atlas is a no-code tool for creating custom Google Maps. So you can add markers, upload markers in bulk by CSV. You can add a sidebar, and you can style everything. Modals are completely customizable, markers too, and of course, maps as well. I think Atlas is an awesome tool, but I'm also the co-founder of it alongside my friend, Carl. So don't take my word for it. You should just try it yourself. You can find a link to Atlas and Snazzy Maps in the video description. In any case, I hope this tutorial was helpful.